conference. We're very excited that uh, we're doing this at 2 p.m. We've got a bunch of people online waiting for the 2 p.m. The Euro Forum, I take it, uh, and have some people for uh, earlier. So that's exciting. But we also have, what we're going to do is, right before, we have one candidate that wasn't able to make it early. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, candidate early just to come up and say a short remarks because we actually don't have uh, this uh, forum already passed. But we're going to go ahead and extend the courtesy of two minutes and have him uh, deliver some remarks so you all online can hear from candidate uh, uh, Carmen Burley, who is running for uh, chairman of the DC Council. Okay, here we go. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late. I was in Ward 7 and man, traffic is bad, but I'm glad everyone came out this, this afternoon. Now, my name is Calvin Girl, I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. My background is 24 years of federal government, a county, and audit. And that's why I'm going to bring you back to the D.C. government, to the council. Accountability and also oversight. Our city, if you hear from any of the council members or candidates, will tell you everything is nice. But our city's in a crisis. We have a crisis of jobs affordable rents, and also education. And the reason why we have these crises is because our city council is out of control. In many instances, they have lost control. They have lost control when they allow developers to build one bedrooms, dens, and malls, where our working families need two or three bedrooms. And you see the construction that's going on. The rents are too high, and now we need working class affordable rent in this city. They've lost control when they have put so many speed cameras, stoplight cameras in our neighborhoods. This is their only way of generating revenue coming back at you. Right now, the D.C. government has to come up with new ideas for generating revenue. And that is, we have to really get on top of things right now. If you notice over there at the National Harbor and PG, they're building a casino. Why can't D.C. build a casino? Las Vegas style, right there at Buzzard Point. Good revenue, that's a good investment. None of the council members would tell you why they're making this wrong investment on H Street now. The H Street trolley, $1.5 billion. But anyway, my name is Calvin Gurley. Be my friend in April 1st. Everyone needs a friend. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Your clock, your clock is too fast. I have five more seconds. There you go. Continue. Let's continue on with the program. So we're excited today. We actually have our two candidates for uh, shadow of senator. Uh, we want to go ahead and get started with our forum. Uh, and uh, we have uh, our intern here. Andy Polanco has just been doing a great job with us, and so we are wanting to make sure that he gets the opportunity to also say, uh, you know, address a few questions to you all. So we're going to go ahead and wait those days. We're going to go and give the candidates two minutes for uh, opening statements, and then after that, we're going to take uh, questions. Uh, and the questions are going to be from our membership that was pre-selected, and so each one is going to get one minute to one. Okay? Thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and give it to Ronnie now. Ronnie. Thank you very much, Gregory, for the brief introduction. Um, we're going to have, we're going to give a call for the candidates in about five minutes to introduce themselves, and after that, we're going to start off with a question. Thank you. Uh, two minutes, sorry. Right. Um, we're going to start with Pete Ross. Thank you. I'd like, I'd like to thank the Asian Island Pacific Association and also the Latino Caucus for letting me come here today. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Lived here in Washington, D.C. for 38 years in the same house, which is something rare. And why am I running for this post? I am tired of having the, being a second class, or I should say third class citizen. I am tired of that. First class citizens are the residents of the 50 United States. The second class citizens are the residents of Guam and Puerto Rico because they have budget autonomy. And the third class citizens are the residents of Washington, D.C. because we have neither 
budget autonomy, nor full representation in Congress. What does Washington, D.C. mean, and why am I writing? Well, besides being tired of not being, having full representation in Congress, I am writing because I feel we need to have a senator who is working full time, not using this post as a part time, but a full time senator, and that is what I will be doing. I'm getting ready to sell my business. If I get elected, you will have a senator who will be spending uh, his time full time, 24 7, actually lobbying for, Washington, uh, for statehood for Washington, D.C. Uh, that's, uh, I, and again, I would like to thank you for coming here to this forum, and I'd like to thank you for inviting me here. Bye bye. Thank you very much. I want to thank the members of the DC Latino Caucus for sponsoring this forum. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you some of the many accomplishments that we've had over the past 18 years. It has been an honor and a privilege to represent the District of Columbia as your United States Senator to the extent that the Senate allows us to do so, but even more importantly, to be there and to interject and to intervene in important proceedings of the Senate, even when they don't necessarily welcome us there. As a DC Senator, my job is to advocate primarily for statehood, but also other issues that come up in the Senate. And we've had an excellent record of getting DC recognized and involved in these Senate issues as they affect the district. When I first got elected in 1996, we were on the verge of losing the very home rule that we had gained. The control board was there. We were losing autonomy over our own local institutions. I fought senators like Bob Faircloth and right-wing Republicans who would use the district as a social policy laboratory. And we won those victories, and we restored our home rule and now, our movement is stronger than ever. We have two bills for the first time in the House and Senate for D.C. statehood. We have the majority leader on board, and we have momentum. And even more important, rather than continuing to advocate amongst ourselves and here in Washington, I think in our fight across the country, all the way to California, we've got an enlisted the help of leading entertainment leaders. We're going to take our campaign across the airwaves and around the country and turn into the national movement it needs to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
but also making sure that the workforce in our Senate office has people from countries all around the world. Let me respond to something from Mr. Stra uh, Senator Strauss. I went to the Martin Luther King Peace Walk. When he's walking on the Peace Walk, he's got his foreign interns from France or from wherever they are, not using D.C. residents. But when I see when he went to the Democratic National Convention and said, you see pictures of, of Senator Strauss with his foreign interns, I didn't see any D.C. residents. This is not what you call. We're talking about getting jobs for people here in Washington, D.C. So, Mr. Strauss, when you're talking about that, let's start right here. Let's try to get jobs to the people that we have here in Washington, D.C. If you look at my campaign staff, my campaign staff consists of one returning citizen, uh, foreign uh, Latinos who are uh, members of the community. We live here in Washington, D.C. You employ, I also have a business, and I employ people here in Washington, D.C. You don't have to reach out to France or the Ukraine or any place else. We want to give jobs to people here in Washington, D.C. Then guess what? We come to the District of Columbia yeah. and we don't have representation. 